Hello everyone, it's me. It is Sharpie Puss Potato right here. Um, we are still in Act 4. Um, we are, well I'm in Act 2 at the moment, but anyway. Um, we are in Act 4. Let's go to Act 4. And uh, we've leveled up a little bit. We are now level 47. Uh, we just defeated the last boss and all that last time. So now it is time for us to uh, venture on to the next quest, which uh, is access the ascent from the eastern side of Highgate. So we need to go there. Um, just to give you a quick update on skills and stuff, because um, I think I've uh, bought a few new things since last we met. So I'll just run through everything real quick. So we've got Flame Dash with arcane support faster casting support we've got convocation with arcane support which basically just that's the thing that summons all my zombies and minions to me then over here we've got some new skills uh i've got herald of purity which is the lightning uh shock that deals lightning damage but the new additions are determination Cast an aura that grants armor to you and your allies. So all my minions and me now have more armor. And we've also got Defiance Banner. Casting once reserves mana to carry out a banner which uh, increases the armor and evasion of nearby allies. So basically we've got lots of armor for uh, myself and allies now. So all my minions. So that's all good. Uh, we've also now got st Summon Stone Golem. I replaced my skitter bots with that. Uh, we've got Ray Zombie with Feeding Frenzy and Million Life Support. And then in the middle, same skills, Absolution, Million Damage, Added Lightning and Spell Echo. So yeah, that's everything we've got running. Um, I've got a lot less mana now as well because of those uh, extra auras that I'm running. But I think hopefully I'll be okay. If not, I might need to get some more mana items or something. But anyway, let's go. Let's do this. Also, sorry if like my eyes look a bit dark. It's because uh, my uh, ring light had actually died. It, it started like doing like a really kind of high pitched squealing kind of sound, and I read online that that's basically if the um, uh, what do you call them? Uh, the LEDs might be dying or something like that and then after a while it just shut off so yeah I think uh, but then again that ring light was from Wish I think for a, not very much money so yeah I, I can't complain too much okay so wow okay just uh, my my enemy my minions are doing a lot for me here I'm not actually doing anything so I'm quite happy with that okay. wow okay uh, my minions are literally just rinsing everyone so um, yeah, that's that's fine with me but I've never got this far before this is uh, the furthest I've actually got so Interested to see how how this will go. Just leveling up my gems. Oh, also I've only just noticed uh, the sound is very low. Let me turn that up for you. Sorry. Whoa. Okay. Hopefully that's okay. Um, you have to let me know if it's loud enough or if it's not loud enough. But yeah, that will be fine. And yeah, so that's where we are at the moment. Um, ooh, that's quite a nice axe. There's lots of sockets on that. I'll take that just in case. Because um, uh, a little update. I didn't record any of it. But basically to get some of those extra skills, the, the two armor skills that I'm now using for everyone, I had to actually make a new character to get that and level it up to le uh, Act 3 or Act 2. Um... Uh, because only that character can actually access those skills unless they drop and they're quite low drops from what I could gather so 
yeah, I basically had to make a do list character and then I had to uh, basically from there just level it up to act two. And once I did that, then I could buy the gems on that character, put them in my uh, stash and then use them on this character. So, yeah, that's uh, that's how that went down. If anyone's wondering how I got those skills. But, yeah, at the moment, like, I don't know if it's just because I've been leveling up a little bit without, but we seem to be rinsing through these guys nice and fast. So, yeah, I might... But then again, that seems to be the uh, the theme of this game is that, you know, you will get to a stage where you rinse through everything very fast, but eventually they will rinse through you very fast as well. So that's the... It's like a little bit of a double-edged sword, that bit. It's like, yeah, sure. So I now kill everything super, super fast, but they're also going to now kill me super, super fast. So, yeah, you just need to play it safe. Uh, yeah. So apologies, because I, I still don't know the way that I'm meant to be going here. So I'm just going to keep going and we'll hopefully find the right way. I'm trying to stop playing a bit quicker than I was before. Right, at least I up there, top left. Just to make it a bit more exciting. Because I noticed some of my videos were a bit long for, you know, what was actually in them. And it's probably not the most fun stuff to watch. So, yeah, hopefully this... Uh, me playing a little bit quicker will maybe uh, make it a little bit less boring. Okay, a portal. Escape the slave pens, okay. Slave pens was a dungeon in World of Warcraft. Apologies if uh, I go quite um, drinking as well. Having a little bit of a cheeky rum and coke. Captain M because you know the weekend why not treat yourself you know it's been a, a long long hard week nice to just relax at the weekend with a, a little cheeky drink I need nothing wrong with the little cheeky drink just drink responsibly everyone okay just okay. don't drink and drive drink responsibly don't drink too much Look after yourself, look after your bodies. But enjoy yourself. You only go around once. So, you know. That's uh that's the motto that we live by today in this stream. Or this uh this video. Oh, I like this place. I really like the uh the location Ooh, that's an interesting one. I really like the locations in this game, like the uh, levels, dungeons, maps, whatever you want to call them. They're, they're just nice variety of everything, you know? Like, you know, Diablo, the only game I, I can really compare this to is like Diablo 2, I guess. Because, you know, that's pretty much what I lived on. Um, but, you know, Diablo 2 has some nice, really nice locations as well. But this just seems to have a bigger variety of them, like... Uh, Probably because, you know, with all the seasons and stuff, they've introduced, like, a lot of new uh, new areas and stuff and everything like that. But, yeah. But still, um, you know. But I, I was um, I was on the phone to my mum just, uh, just a moment ago, actually. Uh, it's Sunday, and I always phone my parents on Sunday. Uh, uh, and uh, I was I was telling her how like um, it seems like the the Path of Exile community in general are very uh, like disappointed in this patch because you know it's uh, like from the feedback I, I'm gathering it's mostly that you know the the drops have been nerfed to some respect and it's harder to craft stuff now. Um, but yeah, basically. Um, I explained but I also explained you know it's different for me because this is the first time I'm coming into the game and for me I'm having I'm having a lot of fun like I am enjoying the game 
sorry, one second. I'm just doing uh, doing my skills. Uh, I think I need to go up here. Life, yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, for me, I'm having a really good time because this is a first time experience for me and I don't know anything different, you know? Whereas the guys and girls who have been playing this game religiously for a long, long time, I can understand why they're frustrated because from what I gather, it seems that they had um, they had something quite nice and it's basically been nerfed or taken away from them to some respect and now they're not happy. So yeah, with the drops, they're getting like less drops maybe or they're not getting the drops that they need as often or something and they're having to play longer and yeah, it's uh, so I can, I can, I can understand why you'd be unhappy. And now I kind of, it made me think a bit back to like World of Warcraft maybe, you know, because the World of Warcraft community are very negative. The majority of the World of Warcraft community, including myself, are very negative about the game and where it's gone and everything. But this is the thing. The older generation are very negative about it because they've had the good stuff in the past and it's like essentially been taken away from them and changed too much that now they don't like it. Whereas the new people who might be playing it, they might come in and think, wow, this is a really cool and interesting game. I've not experienced anything like this before and they are now enjoying it. So yeah, it's kind of you know, you've got to look at it both ways, I guess. But at the same time, I, I actually would, you know, as a new player to Path of Exile, I, I would honestly rather just the veterans get what they want out of the game um, rather than me dictate what the game should be because I'm, I'm new to it. I don't feel I have the knowledge or understanding on what the game should be or shouldn't be. Um, oh, we've got resistance rings here. I'm going to check my resistances and see what we need. We're all quite equal, so fire or cold. So let's go. Maybe if we can get one with fire and cold on Freedom comes to those who. Oh, who do I speak to to get it? Who was it? Yeah. Greetings. Ah, oh, here we go. Fire and cold. Fire and cold, anyone? There we go. Fire and cold resistances. Um, but yeah, basically, I don't feel I have the... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The privilege. I don't know my privilege, everyone. Uh, I don't have the privilege of dictating what the game should or shouldn't be as a new player because I simply don't know enough about it. And... I figure that the people who do know when the game was at its best, the majority of people who understand when the game was at its best, they should be the ones dictating and saying, okay, this is what the game should be. You know, this, this is, you know, this is what the game should be in general. And then essentially we'll have a better game and the new players you know, if as long as they're enjoying the game at the moment, chances are, if things change, they're either not going to know or they're going to just accept and embrace the changes and be fine with it because, you know, they're, they understand that, you know, they're not the ones directing the game's direction or anything uh, like that. That... I hope it makes sense what I'm saying. I'm sort of saying it in my head it makes sense, but I don't know if the words coming out of my mouth are making sense. But uh, yeah, I hope you hope you get what I'm saying. But it, essentially, I'm, I'm enjoying the game as it is, but I can understand the people who are frustrated, and I hope that those people who are frustrated do get what they want. Because for me, I am not important so to say i'm not the target audience i am i'm just along for the ride you know at the moment i am i'm in the honeymoon period with the game like the game could do anything to me and i'd probably still be okay with it but you know essentially those other people they're at the i've been married to this game for a long long time and i'm not going to put up any shit anymore and you know 
they're the ones who who will decide the game's direction and the outcome and its future its fate because at, at the end of the day let's uh let's be real here one second swap a reflection reflection of brutality i don't think i've had that maybe i have um uh let's face it at the end of the day it's the gamers uh the the communities the players who decide the fate of a game if the players aren't happy reddit will know twitter will know news sites will know and eventually it's made pretty clear if a game fails or succeeds based on that uh look at battlefield 5 for example again battlefield 5 honestly i was quite enjoying that game uh, when it first came out i had no issues with it whatsoever um you know okay the bugs i had issues with everyone had issues with the bugs but you were accepting that the bugs would sort themselves out but as for the sort of overall direction of it like i wasn't i wasn't mad about it or anything i wasn't thrilled with it but i was having a good time but because the community spoke up or rose up whatever you want to say um basically killed that game completely as to now no one plays it at all i think now it's making a little bit of a comeback because uh, they introduced twitch uh twitch prime drops and you know twitch prime can kind of put a bit of uh sort of volume uh into any game like if if there's twitch drops you get those drops you want to hop in and you want to see what they look like in game like rust for example i've been collecting rust drops recently and uh, i thought gosh I've, I've unlocked so many like cool skins for like guns and stuff that i kind of want to go in and i want to test these out and see what they're all about do the okie koki and turn around and that's what it's all about um but yeah basically what I'm saying is the, the veterans and the community and the, the majority are the ones who dictate what a successful game is these days. Uh, back in the day, not so much, you know? Like, I remember with PlayStation 1 games, uh, it was quite funny because the only reviews you got, essentially, were with word of mouth from other people and also from the PC magazines that you bought, like PlayStation official playstation magazine power station uh, i think there was one called play stuff like that these were where you got your reviews from and these would be the the ones that dictated if it was a, a good game or not whereas and you know you got to remember that these reviews were only written by one person and everyone has very different opinions on games and i remember reading some reviews back then i've still got some of these magazines in the uk and i i was reading some reviews of some games and they were saying this game is absolutely like you know amazing like best game of the year and everything and then when you actually look at the uh the game itself and how it did you know who no one no one, half the people who if you mention that game nowadays people wouldn't have a clue what the hell that game is uh i can give an example in one of the uh playstation magazines i had there was a game that was called uh espn extreme games and the sequel to extreme uh they in one magazine extreme games got an amazing review from someone that it was like the best game they've ever played like so addictive and everything and um, and honestly extreme games i freaking love i would play the hell out of that game even now i would, if i had an emulator i'd download it and i'd play that it was such a good game but um in general uh it wasn't a successful game at all you know it probably sold a lot because of those um those reviews but because um but because uh sorry I've, I've lost my trial of thought here what was the saying uh it probably sold a lot because of those reviews but was it a successful game overall no not at all most people didn't like it most people weren't interested in it there was pro there was better games available and you know that was the way it went back then but nowadays it's very different 
because you you do you have these uh you have these kind of powerful communities out there uh vocal communities and these are the guys and girls who dictate where the if this game will be a success or not you know and it's a double-ended sword again because you know there's some games out there which i feel i really enjoy but the majority of people don't and that's fine but at the same time it can kind of dictate the way the game goes and what happens with it and that can be a bit of a not not an issue but maybe a negative aspect of it that you know the majority most of the time i would like to say are right but there's some cases where maybe they're not right maybe maybe there isn't a right so to say you know maybe it's just you know it's just luck of the draw but i don't know it, it's very very difficult to explain to be honest it's uh it's a, a very difficult situation because the developers are obviously going to go with the majority most of the time and they're going to try and do what's right for the actual game itself and everything but at the same time you know at the end of the day it's all about you and what you enjoy there's games out there that i definitely oh what am i doing i'm going in and out of portals like a poppadom here okay um at the end of the day, play what makes you happy, do what you do, and enjoy yourself. But, yeah. That was a long rant, actually, about uh, mostly uh, what what was the conclusion I came to there. I have honestly no idea. I'm just chatting a lot of bollo at the moment, so apologies for that. But, uh, essentially, what I'm trying to say is, you know, if you're unhappy with the game at the moment, give your feedback, for sure. Maybe take a break. Play other stuff. Diablo 3 has a new season. I know Diablo 3 is a bit of a joke, but for the seasons, at the beginning of a season, it can be a fun game, to be fair. Uh, Diablo 2 has the PTR up with uh, some new sort of uh, stuff they're experimenting with, so that's something else to try, maybe. Um, other than that, I don't know any other any action rpgs and stuff that are sort of worth playing apart from uh what's that one called the pay to win one um gosh, i can't remember what it's called uh oh my god what is it called that's gonna drive me crazy like not path not a path it's oh man that's gonna drive me nuts what is that game called that's pay to win I know all of you watching now are shouting at the screen. Um, road? No, it's not something to do with a road. I don't want to Google it. I can Google it easily. If I type in pay to win action RPG, it'll probably pop up uh, straight away. And it the, the funny thing is, it's not entirely pay to win, but aspects of it are kind of pay to win. It, it's, it's like a very gray area on the pay to win standard. But yeah. Oh man, Lost Ark, that's what it's called, Lost Ark, there we go, I remember. Um, is it Lost Ark? Or is... Yeah, it is Lost Ark, yeah. Um, but yeah, generally that is a kind of pay to win game, but again, it's a game I played, I enjoyed it, and I will admit, I am very guilty to what others think. Um, it's something I'm trying to change about myself by mostly not paying too much attention to what others think or if i see reviews not 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 paying attention to them ignoring them avoiding them because if i'm enjoying a game like battlefield 5 this is a perfect example actually battlefield 5 i was really enjoying that game i was happy with it i was having loads of fun just hopping in doing match after match it was only when I started listening to all the negative reviews and looking at all the bugs and looking at the feedback that I found myself disappointed in the game as well and the way it was going. 
and that made me a bit upset to be honest because at the time I didn't realize it was happening but now when I look back I'm like yep yeah, I was totally influenced by a, a completely I need more mana. completely different minority again with a different mindset who don't like the game and they changed my opinion on the game because I I am guilty of accepting other people's opinions way too easily sometimes and that is a problem that I do have and I am trying to uh, you know change that so to say but yeah it's uh it's a hard thing to, to change to be honest because yeah and the, the weird thing is it's not usually in uh real life or like real life situations it's only with video games that this happens like you know if someone doesn't like a tv show or something i'm like no way this tv show is awesome you're wrong sort of thing but you know with video games i just i don't know whenever i if the community speaks up i will follow the community i'm a sheep i'm a sheep to the video game industry and uh yeah that's a shame because it, it can ruin games for you but at the moment i am really enjoying path of exile from what i've experienced so far because i know nothing different and what's being said doesn't affect me at all because you know i'm just enjoying the other aspects of the game okay where are we now rift square okay let's go so yeah i hope you enjoyed that long rant about communities and influence and uh you know whatever most but you know this is also if you think about it Sorry, I'm going to keep going on about this. Uh, this is also why um, we have influencers on the internet these days. You know, we have these XQCs and these Asmongolds and Shroud and, you know, all these big, big streamers, like, you know, with a big following. And they will get paid to basically play games like new releases like betas and everything i remember when modern warfare came out half the freaking online community of twitch like every popular streamer was playing this game and you were like and did it help yes because they literally got every single popular streamer from not just from like english speaking but from multiple languages like you have polish streamers german streamers spanish streamers all playing this game and the money that must have gone into that must have been absolutely insane uh and did it work to make the game popular 100 percent mom warfare on release was absolutely phenomenal like the numbers there and honestly it was it's such a good model game model free to play you don't need to buy everything you buy is purely cosmetic skins and stuff and it's how a game should be like free to play and the quality of that game was insane i spent years playing that like i every day like non-stop some days i would wake up go to the p it was like being in college again because when i first moved to poland i didn't have a job and uh i was living in uh my sister-in-law's house at the time because she has a, a nice nicely sized house let's say that uh, that's a polite way of saying it and um basically uh or a modest way of saying it i should say um but yeah basically uh i was living there uh kind of you know rent free you could say uh living the, the dream life of not having a job, not having to worry about money or anything, just doing, you know, being a lazy ass and uh, not doing a thing. But at the same time, it was boring after a while. But uh, so I am glad that I actually do have a, a life now, so to say, and a job and, you know, I'm making money and income. Because, yeah. Uh, but anyway, I would wake up, I would uh, get breakfast, I would take uh, Tosha, the, the pug, for a walk and uh, I would just log on and I would play the shit out of Modern Warfare all day. I 
I like to think I got pretty good at that game. Like, it was uh, a very, very popular game. And, yeah, that was good. So, you know, that's the thing. And that's how, like, influencers can sort of, like, affect the game as well, I think. Because, you know, they're paid to promote and the promotion worked. So, you know, and this is where you've got to be careful of, I guess, with uh, the sort of uh, advertisements and promotions is that you, you don't know if they're trusted or if they are paid a lot of the time because, you know, some of these streamers, they probably didn't even like the game, but they were, you know, they had to play it because they were paid sort of thing. So, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting one, you know. But there you go. That's uh, that's the way the the cookie crumbles, so they say. Okay, so what are we doing here in the game? I haven't really been paying attention to who we're killing and why, but oh, here we go. The blackguards will never stop pursuing someone they consider a traitor. I'm a danger to everyone around me. Keep your life to your own. Oh, okay, so we're... Is this a hideout, is it, that we're in? Or... I don't know what's going on here, to be honest. Ooh, lots of... Loads of people in here. Whoa, look at all these. Leveled up there as well, so I'll put another... Another point in. Oh, there's loads of people here. This is... This is what I like about these games is they're so mob dense, you know, Path of Exile, especially like from when I've been watching streams, there's just mobs everywhere, like around every corner, packs and packs of nonstop mobs. And that's why you play these games. You, you the, the fun comes from killing and from looting. That's it. Hideout unlocked. Oh, okay, cool. So we've got a new hideout. Um, Whereas, you know, some action RPGs nowadays, Keep your life to they, it's like they're trying to be kind of like an MMO RPG, but they're also trying to be an action RPG. So it's like a bit of both. And yeah, that's, uh, I think that's where the issues sort of, not issues, but it's where the, the disconnection ha occurs because it's like, um, they're trying to be two games at once sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, that's what I personally, I'm not a fan of, like, uh, you know, where they maybe, there's not as many mobs, but there's more quests and stuff like that. It's like, if I wanted to do quests, I'd go and play World of Warcraft or Guild Wars or something like that. But if I want to play an action RPG, I just want to be, uh, the quest should be streamlined into the, uh, into the maps. So... I'm doing them as I go along uh, and to be streamlined into the story. They shouldn't be directing me away from uh, different areas. Like in this game, it's very good because it's like, you know, literally everywhere you go, you're automatically doing the quest as you go along. There's maybe, you know, there are some circumstances where you need to swap between a map. So instead of going to... Uh, you know, like in the last act we were in, it was like we had to go to the gardens to get a plum uh, and then we had to go back to the docks and then we had to go here. But at the same time, it didn't feel like I was having to interrupt the, the story or anything like that. It was just like it felt part of the main playthrough, if that makes sense. So, yeah, and I think that's that's what i didn't like about lost ark is that okay it all felt kind of connected but it also felt disconnected with all those quests and everything and there was too much going on in that game whereas the combat in that game was freaking amazing if they just had that game uh with just that combat and loads of mobs that would be amazing but it just it wasn't for me because that's when I play action RPGs, that's not what I'm really looking for. I'm not after that sort of core major storyline and questing experience. Like, I don't mind a good storyline, but 
I'd prefer it in the way that it's like this, um, how it is here and with Diablo 2, that there is lots of options to dive into that sort of um, story, you know, but by doing it, you just have to talk to people and it's built in like a book. Like you just read it if you want and or listen to it. But I don't want to be forced through to watch cinematics and to do all this because let's face it, it's an action RPG and that's not what you think when you want to play an action RPG. I don't know anyone who's like, oh, I'd love to play an action RPG. What? Uh, oh, what do you like about them? Oh, I love the the questing and the cinematics in an action RPG. That's that's what I live for. Uh, no, no one thinks that. And I think that's where a lot of developers are sort of losing their way a bit. They're they're focusing too much on what they they know works in other games, and they're trying to like. You know combine it into these games where it's not really where it just doesn't fit and yeah that's uh that's the way i see it going so not not the best but we'll see maybe maybe we'll get lucky with path of exile 2 and diablo 4 maybe they'll shock us and they'll continue going in the right directions like i i think well, I hope that Diablo 4 will learn a lot from Path of Exile and its success. And they'll they'll find out, you know, why did Diablo 3 not succeed in the way that it did until late on, you know. Because Diablo 3 at the start, it was crap, let's face it. Like, everyone hated it. Um, it was only when they released Reaper of Souls and they introduced all these, like, seasons and... Uh, what else, like, I need more mana. Um, what else did they introduce? Oh, like the bounties and rifts and everything like that. So, it was only then that it became a good game that people enjoyed. And, but at the end of the day, it was kind of a bit too late. Too little, too late, as they say. Uh, if they had bundled that at the start, I think it would have been immense like people would have hopped on the developers would have been more active with it they would have continued to support it a lot more but no it was was not enough sadly and when path of exile started to rise so to say uh diablo began to fall more and more and now look at it hardly i don't know any major streamers who play uh diablo anymore like, maybe at the beginning of a season every now and then. I know a few YouTubers who will hop on for a new season and they will play that. And, you know, there's people like uh, Lama SC who play Diablo 2 still regularly. But again, it's Diablo 2 he plays, not Diablo 3. Which, again, shows that, you know, what he is looking for in the game. He looks for what's fun about Diablo 2 and not necessarily what's fun about Diablo 3. And, uh... I think I really hope that Diablo 4 will take a step back to its roots and not introduce any of these like, you know, silly systems that just don't fit in it. Not silly, because, okay, let's face it, some of them are good systems overall, but they just do not fit in Diablo games, in action RPGs. They're just not made for those games. So I just really, really hope that Diablo is just a pure, pure bread, demon slaying, lots of blood, lots of gore, lots of monsters, just massacre. Obviously, they're going to have a good story because it's Diablo and the lore in Diablo is actually generally like really interesting and good. Um, but the main game should not be focused too much on the other things they should literally just what are all these all these stained glass windows are pretty cool i'm just noticing them in here they're like probably interesting law but i'm not going to read them right now but we will one day um but yeah so that that's kind of my overall feedback and my hopes uh, i think path of exile 2 is likely going to be more on the right direction because they you know they've got first-hand experience with their community and 
everything and although they're having a bad sort of rep right now with this lake of calandra i still think overall deep down they know what players enjoy about path of exile and what they like and they are generally a good developer uh, development team who know what they're doing with the game whereas diablo maybe lost their touch a little bit uh blizzard in general but you know we're in an interesting time right here because I think we've got three Blizzard games that are potentially at the moment out of touch completely with what players want and they are all they have all been planned with sequels that are going to make or break the game basically we've got World of Warcraft with uh, currently on Shadowlands which uh, I played. I, I I play all the World of Warcraft expansions, but to be honest, I'm not going to touch Dragon Land. Dragon is it Dragon Lands or Dragon Isles or whatever it's called. I'm not going to touch it until um, until I actually see what the feedback is from everyone. Because too many times I've bought into the World of Warcraft expansions. I've maybe you know leveling's not been too bad, but then the the gameplay is just not anything that i want at all out of a game like that you've got overwatch one currently and it's you know still falling in its decline from what it once was you gotta remember that you know when overwatch one first came out it had like a 91 uh metacritic score it was like insane it was such a popular well polished and amazing game and they were just too slow at updating it. And the thing it got compared to a lot was League of Legends. But the reason League of Legends is so damn good is because they're constantly introducing new heroes and like new balances and everything. Overwatch just got so stale because nothing was changing at all. It was just sitting in the same state for so long and yeah, okay, you had ranked play and stuff, but that was toxic as hell for most people, so most people didn't even like it. Or they just got really salty that they got placed in a lower rank than they felt they should be at, and they stopped playing. But anyway, that's, that's a different story. But anyway, they just, the developers just didn't support it enough. Like, let's, let's face it, Heroes of the Storm, which was officially announced as a dead game by Blizzard, uh, you know that they weren't going to support it before it went into becoming uh, unsupported it got more updates than overwatch was they had more heroes being introduced more balance changes more maps more skins more seasons everything and overwatch 2 which was their golden goose at the time it just wasn't supported like i don't even know what the you know you had your videos from daddy jeff doing all his stuff but, you know, a video from Daddy Jeff is great. Everyone loves Daddy Jeff, but, you know, they kind of want to see results in game. They want active changes. They want new heroes. Who cares if the hero is overpowered? It's not like only one person can pick him on both teams. It's like, you know, you could have one on each team. So what if both teams have an overpowered hero? It's still going to be balanced if everyone picks him, so... You know, just introduce the hero. See what it's like. If it's completely broken, obviously hotfix it and make it less powerful or whatever. But at the same time, it's like... It's not like you can just pick that hero on one team. It's like both teams could have them and stuff. So, you know. But anyway. Yeah, simply, again, another game which sort of just didn't have the support or active sort of development that it needed and it declined and now look at it i don't i, I, I don't know anyone like you mention overwatch to people and they're like oh yeah i remember that game that's really good I, I wouldn't mind playing that again but they're not gonna play it again the only time they're gonna play it again is with overwatch 2 and if overwatch 2 isn't good enough they're gonna stop playing again straight away if they remember you know how slow the development is for it but for goodness sake I really hope that Blizzard just sort it out like I really do because Overwatch 2 could be a good game 
But from that early access that I saw from streamers playing it, it didn't look anything special. Like, most people thought the streamers were still playing Overwatch 1, which isn't a great look because the reason people stopped playing Overwatch 1 is because it got stale and stagnated. And then if Overwatch 2 feels like Overwatch 1, then it, it's just going to bring that feeling straight back. So, you know. Oh, dear. Oh, and then we've got Diablo. You know, Diablo's had a bit of a weird one because uh, Diablo 3 released, it was crap. Reaper of Souls released, it was good. Not enough changes again. Like, you know, not enough active development went into Diablo, only the seasons. The seasons are very popular, like people log in for a season uh, start, but as soon as they reach the end game, they usually stop again. Um, and then you have Diablo 2 Resurrected, which was, uh, you know, you could say it's a Blizzard game, but really it was done by Vicarious Visions, who did the remaster, for example. Oh dear, someone just died at level 98. That's a big F right there in global. Global. Oh, I haven't got global chat turned on. There we go. How do I do global chat? Put an F. That's a, a shame. Level 98. Gosh. Oh, we got a level. I didn't even see that. Okay. Um, and Diablo 2 was remastered. It was... I think it's a great game. I love... You know, I grew up on Diablo 2. I played a lot of it. And uh, I really love Diablo 2 Resurrected because it just brings fresh life into that game. But at the same time, it did get boring again. Because essentially it's a game from literally the year 2000 or 2001. And without any changes apart from the graphics being updated. And the graphics being updated is nice but it does wear off after a while on you. Like the sort of the wow factor kind of wears off. Uh oh, this looks like a boss. The world must be cleansed of impurity. Oh god. Burn! Yeah, that's okay. It's Rise! going down nice and fast. Nothing I need to worry about here, I don't think. Um So yeah. This is the thing. Blizzard just need to sort of actively develop and introduce new things to these games to keep them, to keep the players there and fresh and wanting to play. You know, it's okay to let players have a break every now and then and go to other games, but when they come back, there should be changes that are like, wow, okay, and they're going to play for a long time before they stop again. Um, yeah, I think that's the bit Blizzard kind of... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, that's cool. It's a big... It's a lot of damage. Cool music as well. Sorry, I'm just... Uh... I'm so glad we made a Necromancer because I'm not really having to do anything here about, apart from just let my minions do everything. They're just like one shotting everything for me, it's nice. I am the storm. Oh. I am so I'm just paying a little bit of attention now because. be really hard without my minions I'm just saying shall save I am sin the forgotten one would that humanity could forget all of my kind perhaps with your help that might still come to pass for now the blinding light has been dimmed and darkness floods in to fill the void the desperate and depraved set a feast for their lord incumbent Kitava 
the ravenous one. Itava the ravenous one, eh? Ooh. This. Ooh. Yeah, that's cool. It was such a crap cutscene. It was so short and there wasn't much going on, but probably they put a lot of effort into that. But still, that's uh, that's really interesting. It was subtle enough to still make you like, whoa, okay, cool. Uh, Chamber of Innocence, where did I come from? Innocence? What do I do? I am Sin. I am Sin. Okay. Um, I guess we go back to town. Oh, what's that? Stun threshold. 3.90. 30% increased. 48. Okay. That's better. Um, but still, what was I saying? Uh, Diablo 2. Yeah, Diablo 2. Great Thank game, you. but there's a... Just sort, sort it out, yeah? Diamond Flask. 100% global critical strike. Evasion armor. Chaos resistance. Maybe chaos resistance would be good because our chaos resistance is really low. And then get rid of the what is that stun threshold? Maybe I think that might be a good idea. Not the jewel. Uh, I don't know which ones are good. I'm just going to choose crimson. Once kit up. Okay, cool. Um. Some of these links are nice that we've got here, so I'm going to keep those. For freedom. Just uh, put all our, Oh yeah. Also, you might have seen I invested in this tab here, so this is my currency tab. So yeah, it's nice. All my currency items go in here, uh, which saves a lot of space now. So yeah, it was on sale, so I figured why not. Uh, and also a gem tab, so all the gems go in there as well. So yeah, very, very nice indeed. We've run out of space for these. Uh, see, I don't know which of these are good or not. I have to review them, so I'll do that another time. But yeah. Let's... Okay, uh, lightning. With this, we got Flask of the Stunk. I'm going to replace that skunk one, I think, with that. Chaos resistance. Oh no, wait, the stun. Where did I put my chaos resistance flask? I swear, did I choose the wrong flask or something? Or did I put it somewhere? Where are my flasks? I've totally lost it. I thought it was this one. Light, it says lightning resistance. I swear I chose chaos resistance. Did I not? Did I click the wrong one? Freedom comes to those once Kitava has got for freedom. What happened? I simply with his skill. Oh, it doesn't matter. Whatever. Yeah, not important. Oh, damage. Uh, I don't know. So we got which one? 30% increased stun. Can that be stunned if you've been stunned? This, this one is probably better. Yeah, that one. Not one in here. Okay, whatever. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, let's put you here. And do we need that one? Yeah, one 2000 life. We can put that in here. I got way too many flasks. I need to get rid of some of them. Identify these. I'll do these later to identify them. Uh, you up there? Who I will sell? Uh, that's not that great, but I might keep it just because the link. Uh, I need to make space for stuff, don't I? So we can fit you in. Delete some threes, so maybe this one for you. This one as well, get rid of that. Use this one's crap, it's got no, no links. There we go. We'll sell the rest. Hello. Oh, 
Okay, awesome. So that was good. That was a good one. Uh, I think we're still on Act 5, right? So we can carry on for a bit. How long's the video been? Because I don't... Oh, it's almost been an hour. I think that might be good for one video, to be honest. So we'll, we'll end it there because I don't want to make these videos too long. I prefer to do little videos and stuff. And maybe because I'll, I'll hopefully have my ring light so my eyes will be less sort of yeah like orangey color and stuff um but yeah i hope you enjoyed i hope my rambling wasn't too rambleistic oh look she's got a stomach ache here i don't know if you can see but she's like having a bit of trouble breathing or coughing there this lani doesn't look too good she's got blood on her mouth um but anyway thank you very much for watching a good morning, a good afternoon, a good evening, or a good night, a good week, or a good weekend. And I'll see you next time on Sharpie Puss Potato. That's Act 4.5, probably. I think that's what the thumbnail will probably be, because we've still got some quests left just in this uh, area, haven't we? Uh, that's the waypoint. I can check the quest here, I think. So yeah, we've still got some places to go and people to see. Oh no, Act 5, sorry. So, oh, I didn't even realise we started. So yeah, we'll just do Act 5. So I already did a bit of Act 5. So yeah, that'll be next time. So thank you very much. I'll see you next time for another exciting episode. Happy Puss Potato. Hopefully with a bit less ranting than this time because I've got a feeling that I just spent an hour ranting about Blizzard and action RPGs and communities and influencers and everything else. But anyway, ciao, ciao. See you next time. Much love.